everybody, Danielle here, Girl Racer Scrap, and I'm here with a tutorial. Um, and I'm going to show you today how to use Distress Ink and Distress Markers to watercolor an image. Let me show you this card here. This is the card I made for the Inky Paws Challenge over at Newton's Nook Designs. So I hope you get really inspired and use this technique to play along as well. So, really cute. So what you're going to need is some watercolor paper. This is just some from Hobby Lobby that I've picked up. You're going to need some stays on ink or archival ink, something uh, more permanent and not reactive with water. I'm going to use distress markers and distress ink. You could use any kind of watercolor medium. You're going to need an acrylic block and your favorite Newton stamp set. I'm using the dinosaurs, which are prehistoric pals. And I'm using an extra acrylic block to actually put my colors on to play with. And you'll need um, water and a paintbrush or a water pen. So let's get started. So we're going to go ahead and use our stays on ink. Stamp him up real quick. I'm gonna quickly stamp him down. And there we go, nice crisp image. Okay. So you can see here, I've already gone ahead and taken my distress sink and I've gone and smushed it down. I've taken my distress markers and I've already scribbled on my block. And then I've gone ahead and already dropped a little bit of water on them with my um, water brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and this is the peeled paint, which is the darker color. And since I'm going to cut them out, I just usually kind of go off to the side and test my color, see what shade it is, if I like it, if I don't, grab some more and mix it. And I'm just going to go in here. And that color, I'm not going to put too much water down. If there is too much, you can blot it with a paper towel. Because otherwise, there's too much water, it will start seeping in areas that you may not want it. Being this guy is going to be pretty much all the same similar shades. It's okay, because I'll go over with a darker color. And I'm sorry for that noise you heard earlier, the cat is uh, on my side table and it's not very sturdy and my Copics are on there and we call it Copic, Copic Thunder and you can hear it now he's shaking that entire table making it thunder so it's really hard for me to keep my cat from not helping me craft. So let me see, there's a little glare from the water. So you can see our little dinosaur. So you can see where, you know, I'm not within the lines, you know, it's bleeding a little in these little dots, but it's okay. I'm gonna cut them out and I'm gonna go back with a darker color in those circles. So it's, it doesn't bother me and it doesn't bother me that I have little white spots cause I'm gonna add more color here. So then I'll squirt a little water out to kind of clean my brush to get it to a new, to, so I can use a new color. If it's a little wet like that, again, blot it or heat it with a hair dryer before you go add more water, otherwise you're really going to make a mess. So now I'm going to come in. This color here is the Crushed Olive. You'll see here, it's a lot lighter. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go in to fill the dots, because I kind of like some two tones in there. He may not turn out exactly like my first din dinosaur, Stiggy, but now I went in for the pumice stone. I'm going to come in, I'm going to kind of make, use it, make some shadows, because it's a gray, it's a warm gray tone. 
And if you need more, go ahead and just scribble some more on your block. You could also, if you had um, a Tim Holtz mat, you can use that and you know go right on the mat instead of using a block. But I did not put my mat down before I started. But I'm okay with that. And you can mix these colors. So if this was a little too gray, maybe you just wanted to darken a green, you can go ahead and mix these. So I'm going to take the pumice stone and this darker peeled paint and move them over. It's like a new color combo. I'm going to test it out. You can see it's more of a little muddled kind of gray. So I'm going to come in here. Say, maybe I don't even want that. Maybe let's add some brown. This is a uh, vintage photo. I'm just going to scratch it there. Pick some of that up. I didn't even clean my brush. I'm okay with that. So let's mix these two together right here a little bit. Get a different muted brown going. So I think I'm getting a little too much water, so I'm going to go ahead and heat this with my trusty heat gun. It will go pretty quickly. Again, heat guns are very hot. Be careful. And even like when it's warming up, when you have it just like aimed somewhere, be careful where you aim it. Um, could burn your pants it could burn yourself it could melt something in the vicinity so just a tip they, are, they get extremely hot so now I dried that so you can see there's no puddled water now so now I can go and add more color without it bleeding out you can see this looks kind of like a mess right now but it's watercolor it's okay so I'm gonna come in I'm just gonna keep going Add some more layers. Layer that off. Go back in with my green. Come in, kind of fill my little gaps up. Soften up. Sorry about that little interruption. I'll go open the door. So I'm just coming in. My brown. I can even go ahead right here and really pick up some concentrated brown. Come back and just do little little dots. And I think these little dots really make the dinosaur kind of stand out and that's what I do is either let this dry or hit it with the heat gun so those dots stay like uniform and small So now I'm going to go in here. I see a lot of watercolor lines. You can see you're like probably going, what is she thinking? But now I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to try and blend these out with just straight up water. That's the only thing about watercoloring is that when you start to mix colors, you're going to get some harsh lines. But that's kind of what watercolor is all about. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to try and stay away from my little dots the best I can. But some of these like bigger ones, I'm going to try and blend these out a little bit. So like here. Just 
takes a little finessing, which, like with anything, Copics, colored pencils, you're gonna, you're gonna play with it, right? That's like the fun of it. And if you have too much water, just kind of blot it out. Alright, so now, since I put a whole bunch of water on there, I'm going to hit it again with heat. You can see there, I'm sorry, I was looking at it myself, not realizing I wasn't in frame. So you can see there, I got lines and all that, but he's a dinosaur. You gotta think, even though he's cute, or she, whoever, however you, whoever you want this little dinosaur to be, you gotta think they probably had wrinkles and creases and, you know, what makes them dinosaur-y like. So as you can see, put these guys side by side here. I colored them... Um, a little different. Um, this guy down here is more green, browns, and him I kind of, or she, no him, I gave that one eyelashes. <laughs> um, he's a little more gray tones with a little of the green spots and then I went back with a glitter pen. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it's not too crazy. I hope it's not, um, you know, discouraging to play with your watercolors, get a little messy. It's okay. I mean, that's what watercolor is supposed to look like. So I hope you have fun and enjoy this tutorial and I hope to bring you guys some more stuff. Bye.